Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kat and today is a very special day. I'm going to meet Dean Green, who also has a wonderful YouTube channel. I'll leave a link below for you guys so you can find it. Um, what he does is he goes around and teaches how to identify or spot uh, wild edibles. Um, and today we're going to a local park in Sarasota called Red Bug Slow. And we've been emailing a little bit back and forth about this next class. So it's been a long time coming. I'm so excited. And um, he even sent me a list of all the wild edibles that we may discover today. And it's a very long list. I was quite surprised that there are so many wild edibles available. So I'm very excited to share this video with you today. If you want to learn more about wild edibles, then keep watching. Has a lot of sap. And oleraceous means approved by the Roman emperor for food or medicine. It was expected to be part of the part of the state. And actually everywhere else on earth you can buy it in most grocery stores. It's just the United States that doesn't do that. And again, I was saying this is the commercial, I think this is the commercial species because it has no thorns on it. And yeah. It's edible. Tastes like a tart green bean, high in vitamin C. See, and also, we'll forget the fact that I'm fasting. But also, um, a lot of people take diabetic medication. Melon, they have um, a soft seed. You can eat the entire thing. Have to come off the pair of nippers. So when you, yeah, so when you, when you see a tall candlestick cactus with little pink footballs, they're edible. So we're on the move, and I'm with Stacy, my co-star here. We're walking through the park. Its botanical name means Egyptian fingers, which is strange. Is there a dry one? And right while we're here. Society hike? Oh yeah, they go 10 feet in 3 hours. <laughs> they talk about everything they see. Yeah. Amelia Payton. Oh, we can talk about a couple things here. Amelia Payton. Firebush. 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 There are two firebushes in Florida. There's a native firebush and the imported firebush. One has orange and yellow leaves, yellow, orange and yellow blossoms, orange and red blossoms, red, red blossoms. But they produce red fruit and the red fruit turns black. Oh, kind of like these here. And if you cook them, you can eat them. You can make chutney out of them, you can make wine out of them, you can make syrup out of them, you can make um, ketchup out of them. And some people, usually more women than men, can eat them raw. If I eat this one raw, it tastes like a grape to me, and about 15, 20 seconds later, I get a burning, sticky aftertaste. I wish I hadn't eaten it. Firebush. Hmm. But a lot of women can eat it and not get that sticky, burning aftertaste. So there's, that's, that's really not unusual. There are genetic differences among your taste for plants. Hmm. It starts out with yeah, it starts out with the green gourd, and the green gourd turns orange, and then, the, then opens up like this. Always, always, always opens into three parts. I used to eat those growing up. Really? What part? Okay. Oh, this is, I would the, the seeds. I would like eat the flesh off of them. Yes. So. So the coating on the seed... Nobody told me I could or couldn't, but I just used to do it. Oh my gosh. The coating on the seed is an aerial, aerial, A-R-I-L, which is either aerial or aerial, and that coating is 96% lycopene. Wow. The antioxidant. Wow. So you can take this and take the coating off and spit the seed out. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Panic grass. Panic grass is Don't not panic. a Native American grass. However, it is edible. It does have edible seeds. You can also dry the blades and get them in powder and use the powder for a variety of things. And all you need to do is just you know, take the seeds and in they go. Or what? you can put them in a hot front, like past cast iron frying pan and park them for a couple of minutes. I think that improves their flavor. Wow. Andy Furt told me once he has these for breakfast. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Panic grass. The only precaution with panic grass, actually any grass this time of year, but particular panic grass, is we're getting into the fall season. We've had a lot of rain. They can be they can be infected with a fungus, mm -hmm. and that fungus can be ergot. And a little ergot gets you high, and a lot of ergot will kill you. Mm -hmm. And there's a fine line. Same thing with nutmeg. Nutmeg is a hallucinogen, mm -hmm. but between hallucinogen and death, the dose is small, tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you just make sure that none of them look swollen and, and moldy. And they will. They'll be two or three times the normal size. And they'll, they'll look like bad bread and all that. So I don't see that here. They'll be fine. These are native. We have about eight species of them here in Florida. This one here actually is Thesalus or Physalis monsoniana, also called the coastal brown cherry. 
Um, we're going to see a two or three species of cedar today. Some people say cider, cedar, cider, either, either. Let's call the whole thing off. So cedar cordifolia. This thing is full of ephedrine. This has so much ephedrine in it, it's actually mentioned in the Florida statutes not to give to anybody at the age of 18. Uh, ephedrine, like the Sudafed hydrochloride, fenfen, also can be used as a catalyst for making ecstasy. So this thing is full of ephedrine. So if you make a tea out of the leaves, it's a euphoric tea. Up goes your heart rate and you are awake. Really awake. Can I get a clipping of Awake, that? awake, awake. <laughs> <laughs> so, can they graft before. really well? Um, <laughs> all the cedars have a five petal pinwheel blossom, light yellow. They okay, open around noon time. So later on today, later on this morning, I'll be pointing out other species of cedar, much Soft. lower, but they have the same blossom, so they're pretty easy to identify. So if you're into euphoric teas, <laughs> yes, yeah, or you want to drive from here to San Francisco and whatever it is, use your plant. Yeah, full of ephedrine. By the way, here's a pink purslane right here. You were talking yeah. about them earlier. Oh, um, I have those. I think only the yellow blossom purslanes are edible. Um, okay. The one, the pink purslane with cylindrical leaves is Portulaca pilosa, which is a native. And the pink blossom one with flat leaves is Portulaca amillus. It's an invasive species from Central America. They both burn my mouth. They both upset my stomach. And quite a few websites refer to them as edible. Oh, he's not alive, is he? Oh, he looks, he looks dead. He's dead. He couldn't make it. Tallow plum. What's it called? Tallow plum. T A L L O W. That's so cool. I like hog plum because there's a lot of hog plum. Here's another one here. Nothing like the other. But the ripe yellow fruit is sweet and and sweet and sour. It's close enough to eating if you want to try it. Oh, there's one. There's some yellow. Oh, that was more yellow than that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, Phylanthum urinaria. A stone breaker and chamber bitters. Been used for centuries for kidney stones. Wow. But good research came out just a, a few months ago. It's also got some anti cancer properties, has some uh, heart attack issue uh, properties to it. I mean, to treat that. So it's a plant worth looking up because um, it's uh, it's got a lot of herbal applications that have got some science behind it. Does it have a common name? Stone breaker, chamber bitters. But the point I want to make is there are 30, 29 or 30 of these in Florida, depending upon the species, which, which expert you're talking to. But the one you want is the only one that has the seeds lined up on the oh, bottom of the stem. Yeah. Pass that yeah. out. See how the stem, see how the seeds are lined up on the bottom oh, of the stem? Yeah. <coughs> There's another one. All the other phylanthons, all oh, the other here. phylanthons have seeds all over the place. On little, a little, a little yeah. stems all over the place. So it's really easy to sort them out. Stone break can't, so you eat the uh, focus here. The seeds? Uh, you make it, you can make a tea out of okay. stone break. Uh, yeah. Well, an herbal, actually, a, a, a certified herbalist might say you, there are other ways to prepare it, but that's you know, not my, But I'm a forager, not an herbalist. And so, but I mentioned herbal applications, but, but that's that's the big difference. So we can, mm -hmm. I'll show you a plant here today where we, we both use the plant. I, I, I use the plant that's very, very young, and, and it, the cells are not all figured out what they're supposed to be doing. So I treat it like a spinach. They take the same plant and use it as an anti-inflammatory tea because all the cells have figured out what they're supposed to do by the time it's old and they got a more complex chemical uh, array. So, you know, two different gold standards for the same plant for two different purposes. But the point is here, Phylanthum urinaria, chamber bit of stone breakers, it's a really good plant to know because uh, you never know when society falls apart and you got a kidney stone. Oh man, yeah. right on. Okay, American beauty berries. I mentioned them earlier, but we can do these again. American beauty berries. They are full of anthocyanins. You can dry them, make them into tea. They are edible. They are, they are tasteless. They have no flavor, almost no flavor. Make a very good jelly. Excellent jelly. Make a very nice wine. In fact, this fall I'll probably bring, bring some wine to classes that I've made from this. And also, um, you can rub the leaves on you to keep away insects. Oh, In fact, nice. the insect repelling capacity of the leaves is far exceeds the reputation of the fruit. And some people say it's better than deep. Let's get some of that. And if you have an oily skin, it works even better. In fact, 
if you mix these leaves with a little bit of oil, it becomes very efficacious for uh, oh, getting rid great. of uh, insects. Mm -hmm. Not alcohol. If you put the leaves in alcohol, denatures whatever, whatever capacity it has. I, I teach at a lot of yeah. conferences. There's always some enterprising oh, person coming up with no, these in an alcohol spray. It does not work at all. But they, but they do have good insect repellent. Uh, it, they've been and they used that way for a very long time. They used to put them in the horses' harnesses, put them in bed rolls, put them in tents. Wow. Good insect problems. I don't talk about these because I don't care for them. We have the greatest variety of amanitas in the, in the south. And, um, you know, all but four or five are very toxic and or will kill you. Two or three are edible, two or three are hallucinogenic, and that's about it. So I don't do much with the, with the genus. This is one that some people think is called uh, Amanita vaginita, and they think it's in a group that's edible, but they really don't know. Mm -hmm. so I just, just leave them completely alone. No thanks. Okay, it's a Persia. There are four Persias in Florida. There's Persia americana, variation Dimilifolia. There's Persia cumulus. There's Persia borbonia, and there's Persia palustris. And this is Persia palustris, which means I like my feet wet. Makes some sense for kind of no wet spot. I can use the leaf like a bay leaf. Give it a cross, give it a smell. I want some of that. Persia palustris, also called the swamp bay. Borbonia is called the red bay. The mm. amylus is called the silk bay, which is really strange. You only find it in the middle of the state up on top of these uh, limestone ridges. And then the other one is the avocado. But we cannot use the avocado leaf for flavoring because they bred it to have fruit okay. rather than it's for later yeah. and so yeah so now the leaves are too toxic for us to use however the aztecs the could broth. use their avocado leaves for flavoring it had an anise flavor and they call that style of cooking they would wrap the food of the leaves they call it tamales um it's here all year it's related to real chickweed real chickweed is here only in January, February, that's, 60 days. That's why I can't find it. Yeah, it's going to be the coldest part of the year. Okay. See, up north, it actually yeah. germinates underneath the snow. Uh -huh. And the moment the snow melts, it pops, the season is done. Okay. They really like the coldest weather. So here is in Florida, it, it only gets, you know, January, February is about it. So the rest of the year, you don't even see it. There's Never. leaves, nothing. No, not at all. But okay. this is West Indian chickweed, which is related to it, used the same way, but it's here all year. Oh, okay. Yes. So the, the, you can give this to the chickens also? Yes, you can also eat this and you can also use it medicinally or for food. Like, and this, so its Latin name is Drymeria cordata. It's mm -hmm. also called dry Mary. Eat it raw? Yes. And it has a stretchy core. It's also also sent up seed spikes and it's also called white snow because when the sun hits it just right on your lawn, the seed pods look like a patch of white snow. Oh. Good thing they weren't yellow. So West Indian chickweed here all year. And what was its medicinal purposes? Uh, they use it for dermatology, skin okay. issues. Yeah, I was talking about these earlier. These are these are edible. These are called I call these peaches and cream. They call them bratlings in uh, West Virginia. Bratling means a mushroom good for soups and stews. And then other parts of the world, they don't have. They only have a Latin. They only have a botanical name. But they're kind of old. But um, the gills are widely spaced, and if it were, if it were younger, it would be weeping a white sap. So I got a white sap, I got widely spaced gills, and then I taste it. If it doesn't burn a hole through my tongue, I've got the right one. If it burns a hole through my tongue, I've got the wrong one. I'm not burning a hole through my tongue. So, that's a, so these, are, these are edible. Wow. Little milk caps. So you would eat this whole stem and, and the caps? Usually I take the stems off and just eat the caps, and I chop them up. Um, they have a bit of a texture to them. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, these are also got a, got a bit of dirt in them. But to me, they have a slight um, maple uh, like maple syrup flavor. What animals can eat and what we can eat is totally different. So I'm not, so I'm not saying the squirrel eats it, you can eat it. Just the opposite. Uh, the squirrels, can, the squirrels can eat mushrooms full of strychnine that would kill us. So we don't do, don't do that. Um, deer eat poison ivy. You know? uh, chickens eat arsenic as a disease preventative if you raise chickens. And we eat avocados, which are toxic for almost everything. So. You can't go by that. Sumac. This is actually yes. called a wing sumac because it has um, it has growths between the pairs of leaves. Right here, see little little growths along the side of the stem. That's why it's called a wing sumac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wing sumac. It's not the most common sumac, but it's actually the most widely distributed it's in all 50 states. So it's pretty easy to identify. Its the Latin name is Rus copalina, which means red sticky. It makes a cluster of like red, like berry 
Well, what it does, it has a terminal cluster yeah. up here of garnet colored berries. And those berries have a gray hair on them. Mm -hmm. And the hair is full of malic acid, which is the same acid that keeps apples tart. So I can take the, take the fruit, put it in water, make a lemonade. Mm -hmm. High in vitamin C. I can also dry the berries and uh, grind them up and then make a spice out of them. That's so People also force us to make shoots in the springtime because they like to eat the shoots. And the shoots in the springtime are all green. I'm going to have a hard time finding an all green part here. But when the shoot is very, very young and you peel it, the end is green. Mm -hmm. And as it gets older, it gets woody and it turns white inside. That's the woody part. So you don't want the woody part. You want the green part. And like here, the green part here. And it's aromatic and astringent. And some people like to eat it raw. Some people like to cook it. But it is edible. <laughs> and of course, in the springtime, it's bigger. And, you know, yeah, right. So we'll see if we can find some. Because over in the woods, we might find some with some berries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to make By the way, this stuff on the ground here is called basket grass. It's not edible, but it's pretty. Yeah, it's a common ground cover and shade. But the other thing we can do is we can get a trail side nibble out of it by pulling the, the center frond out. And there's a there's a knack, there's a knack and a trick to it. You don't want to pull out one that's totally open. They're not going to come out. You don't want one that's still small, unopened like this one. It's not going to come out. You want one that's partially open. This one here. See that? See how partially open that is? And I, I want to make, make sure I've got my angle right. There we go. And so this little part here is edible. It's hard to pull. Uh, there's only about an inch worth of it, and it gets fibrous and all that. But if you're walking through a lot of sun, and also this does not kill this because it has multiple hits. And so there's a little easy kill side nibble there. Whoops. There we go. A little wild there. Over on the other side, we're going to see if we can find some fruit on these. They have jelly bean sized green fruit. Oh. Yeah, they call them mouse cucumbers. But if you crush a leaf, it will smell like cucumber. That's so cute. Crush a leaf and smell it, it'll be like cucumber. Pepper vine, yeah. pepper vine. Yeah. Some foraging books and sites will say this is edible, some say it is not. It's not, it's called pepper vine for a reason. It has calcium oxalates in there, and the amount of calcium oxalate can vary from plant to plant species time of year, place to place, how's that? So you might be able to eat one of these and not burn a hole through your tongue, or you just might burn a hole through your tongue because we perceive calcium oxalate as it's a needle-shaped crystal that we perceive as burning. So lemon juice is a good antidote for it, and so is in lime, actually lime juice is the best, lemon juice is number really? two. But you can, you can squeeze the juice out of these carefully, put it in your refrigerator, let it set for a few days, the acid will precipitate. Hmm. Then pour it off carefully through a couple of coffee filters and you can use the juice. A lot of work. Yeah. A lot of work. That's, now, it used to be in the same genus as grapes and also Virginia creeper, but they farmed them out. So, this is a milk cap. Ah, see it's dripping white. See the white? Mm -hmm. So so I know it's a milk cap. Yeah. So the next question is, is it a spicy milk cap or is it an edible one? Yeah. It's staining. It smells like a dead fish. It's a good sign. It is? Yeah, it is. Ew. Yeah. Oh look at the dripping. Yeah, so it's not burning holes in my tongue. So this is lactofluus luteolus. It is an edible mushroom. Wow. Mm -hmm. It smells like a dead fish. Peaches and cream again? Yeah. Ooh. Did you say peaches and cream? This I did say peaches and cream. Yeah. <laughs> what? So, so, it, so it's got wide space gills. It's got that peach. It's got that peaches color. Mm -hmm. It's got oh, wide color. space gills. It's going to have a little bit. It's a little oak. It has a little bit of white white sap. See the white sap coming out there? And the gills are widely spaced. So this is another oh, edible. It. This is the one that I think has a slightly maple uh, syrup taste. Ooh. Yeah. I taste that. Lactofluus, lactofluus hygrophoridic. Can show us a little piece. They have the maple syrup taste raw? Uh, I, well, I, no, when I, when I cook them, they do. Yeah. And again, in West Virginia, they're called yeah. bratlings because they hold up very well in yeah. soups and stews. And I, would cook, I would cook it. It's sticky. <laughs> yeah. Mushroomy. And, yeah. Another one. Yeah, so Ooh. Lucilla, uh, what? The green ones are edible, the brown ones are edible. 
yellow ones are edible, the pink ones are, mm, the red ones aren't. And that'll wait until it's like so you can cool the top back a bit. So I have a friend, Josh, and he just tastes it. Mm -hmm. You want a bit of hope this time? Well, the pink ones, the pink ones are iffy. It's pretty. My, as I said, my friend Joshua would, would taste this, didn't burn a hole through his tongue, he'd take it home and eat it. Okay. Yeah. Here in Florida, yeah. So that's a very nice example. Also, um, one of the things about the goose was, I mean, it's a very nice goose example, is they, it's close related to the lactic food. Yeah. If you have a foraging book, they put them side by side in the book. This also should break pretty clean. Let's say like a piece of chalk. You have to break the break clean. That's pretty cool. The problem with these is that they're pretty, they don't cook up well. They fall apart. Mm -hmm. So here in Florida, not, not deadly or anything like that. Just maybe doesn't rise to the level of you know, greedies. Mm -hmm. Milk cap again. That's pretty. Pretty good. Is that the peaches and cream? That's the peaches okay. and cream. Yeah. See, I got widely sap. spaced gills. And see, I got widely spaced gills. I've also got some uh, white sap coming out. Mm. Mm -hmm. It actually tastes good. Two more, two more peaches and cream. Mm. Yeah. Let's see how this. This is the young one. See how how easily it, it bleeds latex. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see how widely spaced the gills are. You said latex. Does that mean someone with a latex allergy no, should avoid it? No. Um, two things about that. First of all, we call it latex in the plants, but it's not really latex. Mm, right. And the ones that do have latex is different than man-made latex, so it's not a problem. Gotcha. But see how widely spaced those gills are. Plus the white latex that tells me, you know, and awesome. I got the, and I got the, the, the peaches color on top. Those are edible. That's awesome. Wild coffee. Cyclotria nervosa. There are two types of wild coffees in Florida. There's, and they look the same except the one has shiny leaves and the one doesn't. This is called the satin leaf. The other one is shiny leaf. The seeds are not edible. And look, well, they'll give you a headache and they're relaxing. And no caffeine. I think we just passed the shiny no caffeine. One, so. It could be a shiny one, yeah. it. but you can eat the pulp off the seeds. Spit mm -hmm. the seeds out. So mm -hmm. on both wild coffees, you can eat the purple pulp and spit the seeds out. Yeah, leaflets are three. Yeah. The, um, the middle leaf has a longer stem than the other two, and the middle leaf is symmetrical, and the other two are not. If you think you're not allergic to poison ivy, you will be. <laughs> Don't like that. It's the horror story, buddy. Everybody has a different resistance, and each exposure reduces your resistance, and at some point you get it. So this is another rusula. This is a brown rusula. Yeah. Should be edible. Should not be peppery. Stem breaks the pit. They're awful, very fragile. So we saw a pink rusula over there, a couple of pink ones, and now here's a brown, brown one. Is this the peaches and cream? It is, and it's a, and it's the uh, it's the. Is that what this one is too? No, that's a that, that's a rusma. That's a rusma. That's a brown rusma. Um, not at that age. <laughs> yeah, that's your that's your peaches and cream again. Wide widely spaced gills, no staining, and if it was younger, it would have uh, would have white sap. But see, when they get old, they dry out. It's also being parasitized by some other fungus. Yeah, it's not a good one. All over there, rubbing most of it off. Fungus on a fungus. <laughs> Some of them make them edible. Remember, I said that there are these peppery rusulas, a peppery uh, lactofluus. Mm -hmm. Some of them get infected with the hypomyces and they turn lobster red, and they're called lobsters, and they taste like lobster. Yeah. So there are fungus infected by a fungus that makes them actually makes the non-edible ones edible. That's so crazy. And they've been reported as far south as Tampa. Over here, this is called dog so vomit slime mold. Uh, Looks like it. Well, yeah, it looks like it. So it's called dog vomit slime mold, right there. That's what that's called. And there's Don't a reishi. Not really edible. It's a reishi mushroom. Uh, my herbalist friends tell me that the reishi mushrooms in Florida can be used like the reishi mushrooms from elsewhere. And what they do is, <clears throat> some people eat the growing white edge. It's very, very bitter, but it stimulates their immune system. Some people take the mushroom, dry it, put it in alcohol for a while, put it in water it's for a while, there. and combine them. Mm -hmm. They're extracting mm -hmm. polysaccharides. Polysaccharides stimulate your immune cells in, in your small intestine. So the herbalists, my herbalist friends say these do stimulate your immune system. The question is, do you want your immune system stimulated all the time? That's that's the big debate in, this, in, this, in, the, in the system. This particular one here is going to be Ganoderma lobotum. Um, lobotum tends to have two stories to it, and I think that's what they're trying to do. And we might see one that's easy to identify called Fertissia. But if you're into reishi mushrooms, there's one there. Super cute. Hmm? Super. 
What up, some wild cucumber? Yeah, show people. There's, there's the fruit. Oh, it's so cute. You can eat them when they're medium green to medium, light green to medium green. Maybe slightly that, but you don't want them the dark green or black green because they're mother of all laxatives. I'm looking for green berries that are shiny, mottled, and flecked with white. Also, all the berries are at the end of the stem. They're not distributed down the stem. So that's one thing I'm looking for. Then I'm looking for an occasional blossom in which the petals go backwards. They go down instead of up. Yeah, see, I got, yeah, I got some going pick on that. I got some going down. So over here I've got shiny green berries, mottled, flecked with white, all on the end of the stem, and I've got some occasional petals going backwards. That tells me I've got American nightshade. American nightshade fruit are edible when they turn ripe, which is dark purple. So, so, down. so he's taking us to the side of the road. Um, we're walking around the park. What are we Silver thong, really easy to identify. It's got waxy wow. leaves and silver in the back with rusty Super circles. silver. Yeah. This wow. thing fruits in this thing blossoms in December. It fruits in February. It's rough. It has like a red fruit that looks like a red jelly bean with silver and gold speckles. So if you think of Valentine's Day and a little red jelly bean, this plant produces it. The uh, entire seed is edible. It has um, omega-3 fatty acids in the wow. seeds. It has lycopene in the fruit, and it's quite edible. Easy to identify. Look for it Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Up in Georgia. Actually, the Carolinas, this is illegal to possess in the Carolinas because it's an invasive species there. Oh. They brought it to the Carolinas first because the botanist said the fruit's not uh, nutritious for birds, the birds won't eat it. But they didn't tell the birds that. You know, so the birds spread it everywhere. So it's not an invasive species here in Florida. If it does escape here in Florida, it will be an understory tree and very leggy. Very, very leggy. So again, boxy, boxy green blossoms in December, fruits, Valentine's Day, red. Green, red jelly bean, silver and gold speckles, very, very sweet. If it's not sweet, it'll slice your mouth. And very high in lycopene. Makes wonderful wine, jams, jellies, eaten out of hand, very nice. Easy to identify. So this is the other, this is not the oh. other. Wait, is this the same tree? Yes. Who's related to yes, okay. so much Give me a cutting of that. Yeah. Cinnamon tree smells yeah. so good. On this side of the fence, yeah. We might be able to find this elsewhere, but since I'm seeing it right now, we'll get it right now. I always put it back. There. So here is the Copa Monieri. The Copa Monieri. Just remember, Bacopa, Bacopa Monieri. Oh, Bacopa. Yeah, Bacopa. Also called water hyssop. <clears throat> very, very, very bitter. Grows in wet spots. <clears throat> Double blind study in Australia. They took 65 year old with cognitive impairment executive functions, fed them 325 milligrams dried a day for 12 weeks. Dramatic permanent improvement. It upregulates the gene. The gene tells the hippocampus to make uh, protein. The protein tells the hippocampus to make new memory cells and it's permanent. They took 55 year olds with short term memory issues, fed them 125 milligram extract, again for 12 weeks. Dramatic permanent improvement. But it took 12 weeks to upregulate the gene. I've had six people tell me it's made a dramatic difference in their lives. Wow. Also, a lot of research out of India, whether you're 15 or 85, it improves your memory function. Also, it's good for concussions. It's an antioxidant. What's it called? Bacopa. B-A-C-O-P-A or Bacopa water hyssop. All the above ground parts and okay. stems. Now, there are six Bacopa in Florida. Bacopa Caroliniana doesn't look like this. Smells like lime. Makes a very nice pleasant tea. Probably not good for you. Uh, you find it in wet wood roads and things like that. So it looks very different. So we'll, get, we'll put that one aside. That leaves us with five Bacopas. Four of them are geographically isolated or extremely rare. The chances of you running into the other four are almost zero, but there are four others out there. The mm -hmm. one you want, this one, is the only one with a single crease in the back of the leaf. If you were to look at a single leaf, the leaf has one little crease in the back, and that's the one you want. It's also most likely the one you're ever going to see. So, but you should know that there are, the other ones have more than one crease. And the Pacopa Caroliniana doesn't look like this at all. It actually has big, soft, uh, soft leaves that crush and smell aromatically nice. Yeah, you don't see it. Yeah, you see it every four or five years. Yeah. So this is the Pacopa. Take that home and put it in a sunny, wet spot, and it'll stay like that all year long. 
No seasons to it. it just loves to grow all the time. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to necessarily be in water. Yeah. It's a wet spot. No, well, wet spot. It doesn't have to be water as long as it's not in a wet spot. <laughs> now, in India, they dry it, make it into tea. So we know drying it does not ameliorate the potential size. Ah, brain food, high sop, some kind of high sop. Try to keep it wet. <laughs> so this is, it has ephedrine in it. The leaves, the what? Leaves and roots. Leaves and roots. Um, cedar grows quite tall. This is cedar rhombophobia, full of ephedrine. It's got the five pinwheel blossom with just an opening there. More. Panic grass, panic grass, panic grass. This is a Caesar weed. Caesar weed has a little pink blossom, which is edible. They don't have any flavor, but it's in the hibiscus family, so it's in all hibiscus. Is this is the what? To make fiber. You throw it in water, let it rock for three weeks, you get long, long glass fibers. It's a medium special strength. This is Caesar weed. Edible flowers, no flavor. Caesar weed. Ooh. I got one. See? Who wants it? You want to try it? Here. Tell us what you think. You look like a farmer now. <laughs> That's cute. What's it taste like? Is it like substantial? Get some calories in there. But it's good survival food. It's so cute. It's like a little leaf. I'm going to try my first, what was it? Indian chickweed flower? I think so. Yeah. It's another way to get pollen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honey wart. It's all the weed is peltate. The stem attaches to the middle. The old Greek shield was a peltose. The stem attached to the middle. So this is all the weed. I'll get you in the picture. He likes it wet, right? Yeah, dollarweed does, yeah. It has one claim to fame. It increases increases the nitric oxide the system, makes blood vessels relax. Mm. Easy, easy, it's in the ginseng family, actually. Easiest way to remember this is it is a green Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> but if you tell people that, it'll become extinct. <laughs> Long care businesses will go out of business. <laughs> there it is. And it always tastes like carrot tops on steroids. What is this? Dollarweed. Is it also called Penny Penny Royal? Penny Royal? Oh, yeah, yeah, Penny Royal. Yeah, but wart means plant. Yeah, Penny Royal. They call them dollar weeds because dollar they get up to about the size of a silver dollar. When the sun hit them just right, they look like silver dollars. They call awesome. them dollar weeds. Yeah, Hydrocaudal umbanaris. Um, Hydrocaudal means water dish because the Greeks drank out of a saucer, not a cup. So you're reminded of drunk botanists. Of a so common. Dollar. So, anyways, um, it tastes like carrot tops. Strong carotops, and it makes uh, makes uh, blood vessels relax, which is what Viagra does. Also, if you mix a ginkgo leaf with these as a tea, it makes them more efficacious. I have a friend who tells me he in Port Charlotte. He says he eats, eats a quarter cup of these every day for his high blood pressure. Amazing, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so here we have oxalixes right here. We have two types of oxalixes in Florida. We have oxalixes that are oh yeah, I love big those. And, with pink blossoms, and small ones with yellow blossoms. And this is a big one with pink blossoms. This is rhubarb blight. I love these. Like lemony, citrusy. And the entire plant's edible. Stem's edible, leaves are edible. You want one? All the birds are edible. These are the little oxalixes. Oh. The yellow blossoms. So the two groups big ones with pink blossoms, the little ones with little yellow blossoms, but they're still a rhubarb, rhubarb light. I think the pink ones, big ones, have a more complex flavor. Mm hmm. Those tasty Oxalics. little things. I know they're hibiscus because the male and female parts are fused together in the middle. So all hibiscus blossoms are edible. The whole thing? Yeah. Oh. I have a bush. I make tea. Mm hmm Yeah. All hibiscus blossoms. This one here is called Scarlet Sister. Okay. Alright. I, I got that. that. It's a tea plant. Yeah. Tea plant? That's good to know. Yeah, there you go. You get what is it? Tea plant. You just eat it or make like tea? Yeah, it leaves in the roots. Yeah. Leaves in the roots. Wow. Looks like garlic and smells like garlic. You can use it no matter where you are on earth. It's strong. If it looks like garlic and smells like garlic, no matter where you are on earth, you can use it. This is society garlic growing right there. Community. It looks like garlic. It smells like garlic. It's really strong.
-hmm. Now they call it society garlic because they thought it was less strong. <laughs> but actually it's stronger. Yeah? Careful. Podocarpus <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> macrophilus. Podocarpus is fruiting right now. I'll pass that back. Podocarpus is fruiting right now. What you see is <clears throat> the seed is on the end wow. and the seed we do not eat. So we actually pull this off. We throw the seed away. Which part is the this seed? Is the, part you eat. the darker stuff. You're welcome to. All that. Just remember the seed on the end you throw away. You're looking for the blue. It's called the blue aerial. Yeah. What does it taste like? Like a grape. Like a grape? It's like a grape. No, yeah. no, no seed in it. Sweet. Yeah, the seed is on the end. <laughs> I want one. People are passing. I don't think they would care. Don't eat the, the lighter colored one and you eat the dark one. So you don't want the light one, you want the dark one. Uh, the blue blossoms taste like raw mushrooms. This one's? Wait. Yeah. The blue, family? No. Looks more. Pr the blue is this the one? Taste like raw mushroom. To me, this is purple. Oh, they do. Wow, they taste like mushies. The blossoms taste like raw mushrooms. That's wild. There's some here. I can also make a tea out of the leaves that taste like porter beer. Porter beer. Porter yeah. I, I can also that. use the flower spices. Oh, it smells nice. Oh no, it tastes a little mushy. Blue porter mm -hmm. weed. There are two blue porter weeds in Florida. The bottle brush tree and the Malaluka, which is the tea tree, used to no be way. in Venus. So if you crush these leaves, you'll smell like tea tree oil. So if you want tea tree oil, you make a leaf tea from the leaves. Oh, we have. You can also make a tea from the blossoms. That's and, crazy. Uh, it's sweet. Brian does it all the time. You can make a tea from this. It's 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 I know. Make a, like an aspirin out of the bark. Oh, strawberry guava tree. Okay, who wants I to try? I, I eat these all the time. You can have it. I, Never have, had I actually one. have one. <laughs> it's so good. Definitely save that little like seed. A, a little bit. There's some more over there. Do you want to try? Yeah, yeah super good. Like hoppy flavor. Yes, save those. They're called Cida. Cida, yes, I did. We saw it first in this morning, Cida cordifolia. I with remember. Our different species. And yeah. This one again was from uh, ephedrine. Ephedrine. Ephedrine in the leaves. That's it.